Hello, I'm Leslie Murdoch, and welcome to Continuous Live Testing, or Continuous Testing Live. Sorry about that. Live testing, <laughs> testing live, whatever. <laughs> we're from the stu we're from Santa Clara offices and CA Technologies, and I'm with Steve Poloni, VP of Products. Uh, products. <laughs> Just leave it as that, VP of Products. All right, and we're going to talk about the, my first question is, what is the API economy? Well, it's basically that's the new economy. So people are saying it's the app economy. Every business nowadays is a software company, right? Applications are running everything. But why is it the API economy? Because APIs run applications. And many applications don't have UIs anymore. It's basically just the APIs themselves. Mm. So you can take an API, the app economy and easily say it's the API economy because APIs are running everything. Just think of Uber. Right? Yeah. It's all run through APIs. Think of Netflix. Think of all the companies that you know, you love, that are successful. Amazon. It's all API driven. Okay, cool. And what are the significant challenges of the API economy? The significant challenges of the API economy. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, it's really the challenges of the new economy in general, whether it's APIs, whether it's applications. The, the challenges are is that everything now has to be faster. Mm -hmm. You don't have 18 months to do releases. You don't even have six months to do releases. So the challenges are getting everything done in a very short time frame. And so now developers are doing so much more. Mm -hmm. The business and the developers and the operations guys all have to be working in conjunction in order to make sure companies and products are successful. Cool. And what is API testing? Well, that one I think is just self-explanatory. <laughs> it's testing. APIs. Okay. So instead of just focusing testing on a UI or, or some other thing, you focus your testing on the API level. And the reason why you'd focus on the API level mm. is it's at a lower level. You can catch problems faster and catch problems easier if you're testing at the API level as opposed to just testing at a UI level. UI is high, so if you find problems in a UI, mm -hmm. now you have to drill down to figure out what's causing the problems. So you're giving, you might find a bug, you hand that over to the development team, and now the development team has to do a lot more work to figure out what the problem is. But if you focus on the API, which is lower level, you'll find the problem in the API versus at the UI. I'm not saying don't do UI testing. Definitely do UI testing, it's important, but you want to get more testing done at the API level than at the UI level. Okay, and Klaus is going to give us a demo in just a second here, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I wanted you to talk about how much effort do developers typically spend on API testing? All right, I can, I can do a smart answer. <laughs> but, but really, the developers aren't spending a lot of time on testing in general, so they're not spending a lot of time on API testing. Developers have so much to do. Look at this, shift happens. What, what does that, that mean? That means developers have so much to do now. They have the development to do, they have the testing to do, they have so many things. They have to figure out how to do the releases, mm. they have to do validations, they have to do documentation. So, so many things have shifted left, shift happens, that developers just don't have the time or the energy to do all the testing that's necessary to make sure that what they're developing is actually of the highest quality that it needs to be. Mm. Okay, and so what is CA Blaze Meter API test? So, Blaze Meter API test, that is our answer to API testing. Okay. So, there's a lot of different tools out there to help people with API testing. Okay. What we've done with ours is we support all the basic things that you need to do for API testing. When you look at API testing, when you look at testing in general, okay. there's two things. You have example-based testing, and you have property-based testing. Okay. So we handle both. Oh, wow. The beauty of this is, so your example-based testing, your positive and negative, you put a data in, you expect certain data out, and you're going to do assertions on that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. We can handle that. The beauty of what we do now is we have what, what we're calling property-based testing. Mm. And we look at the contract of an API. And once we understand the contract of the API, we auto-generate tests, positive, negative, edge cases, SQL injection, auto-generate these tests. 
so that the developers, the testers, they don't have to think about all the tests they have to do. Mm -hmm. And we give you a comprehensive set of tests to properly validate APIs. With the shift left, we're helping alleviate some of the shift by auto-generating the tests, auto-running the test, having it hooked up with the CI process. I like auto-generating. So, okay, so what Automating the automation. Automating the automation, love that. How does API test solve some challenges? Well, the, the way that ours is solving the challenges is it's taking too long for the developers to actually create the tests. Mm -hmm. What we found is when we looked at developers and the tests that they run, they might run one positive, one negative, mm -hmm. and they run those over and over again, they say they're good to go. Now, when I say that to other people, like when I say this to audiences, they laugh mm -hmm. because they realize, well, that's clearly not enough. But in the time frame that developers have, they just don't have the time frame to properly test. Mm -hmm. So by auto-generating all these different tests, now the developers can use a whole slew of positive, negative, edge cases, all these different types of tests to properly validate the APIs. So this helps alleviate that challenge. And so when developers are handing something off or trying to deliver the APIs for the API economy, mm. they now can be assured that it's of higher quality. Okay. Cool. So now we're going to do some show and tell. Klaus, please introduce yourself. We love your show and tell. Yeah, introduce, introduce yourself to our fantastic audience. Sure. Hi, my name is Klaus, and I'm product manager for Blaze Meter, and I'm going to demo the auto generation that these folks just talked about to you. So over here, you can see in Blaze Meter, what we can do is simply um, upload one of those contracts that Stephen talked about. In this case, it's going to be a Swagger file. Cool. So I'm going to upload the Swagger file. And with a click of a button, um, let me get back here. I guess my session expired. All right. So uploading the Swagger file. And then with the click of a button, all of these tests that we talked about are being automatically generated. So you don't have to manually write any tests. But instead, all of these tests for the different endpoints of your API are being generated. And once all of those tests are generated, you can simply run them. And the next thing is, obviously, after you run them, you will get to see a report. And in the sense of a good uh, cooking show, I've prepared an example here. <laughs> so we can look at a report. And what we see is... This is actually the overview, um, so you have trend reports. So if you run the test multiple times, you will get for each uh, run, you will get an individual report. And as you can see, we had one run where something failed. So what we can do here is drill down and look at the exact failure. So I'm going to do that, click on the example uh, um, report, see uh, all the data on the overview here, and then I can further drill down to the exact failure. And that's the, the real power, and that's really important, right? Because you want to know what, what happened, what exactly went wrong. And here we see one of our assertions that we defined failed. Cool. I like it. So, so question. So that Swagger doc, how are people giving you that Swagger doc? Or how is that Swagger doc, how does it need to be generated? Mm. All right. So ideally, as part of your development process, you want to... Um, define annotations in your code and then the swagger file is automatically generated you can even commit it to your source repository and then hook that up with your C ci tool whatever you use cdd for example mm. um, or or anything else um, and then as part of your uh, build that swagger file you can even um, upload it automatically via api again um, and auto generate the tests and run the test so you can automate the automation so without doing anything, basically. So that's great. So by using this, we are actually alleviating some of the shift because the developers or the testers, neither one actually has to create all those tests. It's just automatically done for you. And you saw just by uploading a Swagger document, the test just got generated. And if the Swagger doc was generated prior to the development, if it wasn't done through the annotations, now the developers can use this as something like a TDD, test-driven development, right? Exactly. Fantastic. All right, so thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching our live continuous testing. 
show today. Um, for the website, you're going to tell them where to go. Oh, for more information, go to when shift happens dot io. Make sure it's shift when shift happens, <laughs> not something else. Okay, when shift happens dot io. Get more information. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Bye, Klaus. Thank you for the demo. Bye.